Hello friends, and welcome back to your 30 days of 30 minutes a day yoga challenge benefiting St. Jude. I'm so excited to share today's practice with you guys. Today we will have our second asana or pose based practice. And today will all be floor stretches and floor poses. As we go further and further into this, we'll begin to integrate more and more poses along with our breathing and along with the meditative aspects that we learned in the first few days of the series. Let's get started. So this video will be the next two days of our series. For the first day, I invite you to really focus on finding the asana or the physical part of the practice, learning how the shapes feel and fit into your anatomy. And on the second day, I invite you to focus a lot more on the breath connection and on the mental aspects of mindfulness here. So since this is a series designed for absolute beginners, you'll want to have your yoga mat, or if you're just using a towel or a blanket or a carpeted stretch of floor, as long as you're comfortable, that's all that matters. If you do have anything like yoga blocks or a yoga bolster, or maybe a thick pillow or two, those can be useful today, but they're certainly not required. And neither is a puppy dog. All right, like usual, let's get started with some centering. Let's start off our centering by finding a comfortable seat. That might look like sitting in your Sukhasana or crisscross applesauce pose, or it might just look like extending your legs straight out in front of you, whatever is most comfortable for you. Whatever you choose, rock back and forth on your sits bones and look for a sweet spot where you can sit up nice and tall. Your diaphragm has room to move, but you feel relaxed and comfortable. Place your hands onto your thighs, your knees, or wherever else feels comfortable. Then inhale, squeeze your shoulders up and into your ears. Exhale, roll them back and down. Inhale, squeeze them up. Exhale, back and down. One more time. Inhale, squeeze them up. Exhale, back and down. Take a little neck movement here if you'd like. Get any, getting any crunchiness or tension out of the neck. And start to either blink your eyes closed or just soften your gaze, finding your drishti and finding some stillness. Begin by checking in with your breath today. just generally checking in with your mood, how your body is feeling, and what's going on in the present moment. Do you find that your mind is calm and centers easily? Or do you maybe have some of that monkey mind, constantly tugged away by external distractions or internal intrusive thoughts? Whatever your experience is today, greet yourself with compassion and continue to breathe. Just noticing what energy you've brought to your yoga mat and releasing any tension or unhelpful expectations that you're carrying. Start to breathe a little deeper, cultivating a rhythm to your breath in and out your nose or your mouth. Whatever your breathing looks like, cultivate a conscious rhythm to it and lean into that rhythm, making it just a little bit deeper with each breath cycle. If you'd like, I invite you to pull your hands together at your heart center, pressing your thumbs into your sternum. And if you'd like to set your intention for your mat practice today, ask yourself what it is that brought you to your mat, that brought you to this yoga challenge today. 
Seal that intention into a word or a phrase and breathe that into your heart space. Seal in your meditation and your intention with one deep round of unifying, cleansing breath. Deep inhale through your nose and let it go out your mouth. Slowly start to blink your eyes open, return your gaze to the room around you, and let's cultivate our breathing and our meditative minds into some asana practice. Let's start out today with a little bit of pratapana or all six spinal movements to open up our bodies before we learn our new poses. So start out by taking your hands on top of your legs. Inhale, pull your chest open, shoot your tail back, lift your gaze and open your throat, coming back to our seated cow pose. Breathe out, push your thighs away, curl your chin into your chest and tuck your tailbone. Breathe in, pull your chest forward, open up your collarbones. Breathe out, push your thighs away, curl your chin to your chest, separate your shoulder blades. Inhale, pull open, open up through your heart. Exhale, push and round, separate your shoulders, tuck chin to chest. Now you can keep going like this today. Or if you'd like to add on your shoulder movement, same spinal movement, but we add in an interlaced grip of our fingers. Inhale, lift your knuckles high, press your chest forward, flip your palms at the top, look up. Exhale, curl your, curl your knuckles in towards your ankles, chin to chest, tuck your tail. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, curl in. Let's take seven or eight more cycles of these and make it yours. First grounding into the breath connection. Remember, inhale up, exhale down. And you can keep it simple, or if you'd like to add on a little bit of extra movement, maybe some side to side bending or twisting. Find what feels authentic and beneficial to your body today and trust yourself as you experiment. Let's take two more breaths here. And meet me with your hands to your heart center. Press your thumbs into your sternum, inviting compassion into your body, and take a deep inhale through your nose. Exhale, let it go out your mouth. All right, place your hands on top of your thighs, no matter what your seat looks like, especially if your hips or knees are getting a little pinchy here, feel free to come into more of a straddle position. Whatever you choose, inhale to zip your spine up nice and tall, like a string is pulling you up. As you exhale, tilt towards one thigh. Inhale, scoot up and over towards the other thigh, all the way back up. So I'm starting with clockwise circles. Maybe you're starting with counterclockwise. As long as you switch directions at some point, it's perfectly okay to start either direction. First, ground into your breathing. Inhale up. Exhale down and around. And decide if you'd like to have smaller circles or maybe big ones with some shoulder and neck rolls. A lot of the asana practice in yoga, to me, is all about finding some funkiness, experimenting with some movements that might feel silly or look silly, and just enjoying that time to play and figure out what feels good. Start to switch directions if you haven't already done so. And give yourself permission here to try something new or that looks weird. And to release yourself from any movement you find that doesn't feel good. It's like you're really getting to know your body here. Let's take one more. And meet me seated back upright. We'll take a little bit of shoulder and neck stretching. So inhale, squeeze your right shoulder up and in towards your ear. Exhale, roll it back and down. 
Inhale, left shoulder up. Exhale, back and down. Let's take that a little faster. Inhale, right up, exhale down. Inhale, left up, exhale down. Inhale, up, exhale down. Inhale, up, exhale down. Three, two, one. All right. Straighten your legs all the way out. And if it's available to you, interlace your hands together behind your head. Push your elbows apart. Draw your spine into one straight line. Keep your rib cage pressing downwards rather than flared up. Inhale, grow tall. And as you exhale, start to bob forward. If you'd like to involve your hamstrings, you can also flex your feet forward. Inhale, grow tall. Exhale, bob forward and curl your chin into your chest. Stay like this or for a deeper neck stretch, let your elbows hang heavy. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, sink a little deeper and hold for one more breath. Slowly curl up one vertebra at a time. Release your hands. And if you'd like, you can take a little wrist circle, an ankle circle here. Maybe a little circling of the head to rinse out anything we just awakened in the neck. All right, now that we're all nice and warm with our spinal movements, we can get into some new poses. All right, now that we found some movement in our upper bodies and the upper part of our spine, we're ready to learn some new poses. Today we'll be focusing on learning some of the floor poses included in Sun Salutation A, which is a really key sequence in yoga. We'll begin with a little bit of back bending, starting super gentle, then advancing into deeper stretches, so long as those feel okay in your body. If you have a pillow or two yoga blocks, make sure you have them close to the top of your mat. Let's start by laying down on our bellies. Stack one hand on top of the other and release either your chin, mouth, forehead, or one cheek onto your hands like a little pillow. Separate your feet nice and far apart here and just pause. Notice the feeling of pressing your belly into the mat and the ground underneath you. It might feel good, it might feel unfamiliar, or both. Let's take a few breaths here and send your body some gratitude for its capacity to be in this shape your diaphragm's ability to expand and breathe deeply. Now you can keep your feet like this the whole time. This is really gentle on your low back. Or if you'd like a little deeper stretch going into the lumbar, walk your feet closer together. They can be as close as all the way together. Prop yourself up onto your elbows and we'll start with our Sphinx Pose. So prop up until your elbows are underneath your shoulder blades. Press all 10 fingerprints into the mat. You can even make little cat claws here and exaggerate. Look up softly. You can stay like this or to really get a deep stretch, pull your elbows back and your chest forward. So if you watch me, I'm pulling really hard, but it doesn't really make a big visual difference. However, I really feel it in my body and my chest and my shoulders. So imagine one of those regal Egyptian sphinx statues. This is the look that we're going for. Look up a little bit higher. Take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Stack your hands back on top of each other. And release chin, mouth, forehead, or the opposite cheek. So this pose is called crocodile. It'll be our little resting position between back bends. Take one deep breath here. Slowly prop yourself back up. Let's take our Sphinx Pose one more time. So we have elbows underneath shoulders. For a deeper stretch, pull your elbows back, your shoulders forward. And maybe you can even feel some lengthening through your upper abdomen. Squeeze your shoulders down and back. Look up. Take a deep breath in. A deep breath out, squeeze a little more, maybe look a little higher. Deep breath in, deep breath out. 
slowly lower your forehead back onto your hands, but this time switch which palm is on top. Take one breath in crocodile. Good. Now place your hands underneath your shoulders. You can take your Sphinx pose a second time or start to press into your hands and gently slowly lift up. Start out nice and low and listen to your low back. If you're feeling okay, you can extend more and more, maybe all the way to straight elbows, but know that this is not necessary to get benefit from the pose. Stop when your low back says this is enough, especially if you're in any kind of active pain. Now, if you'd like, you can take a pillow or two yoga blocks and place them underneath your elbows. And this is kind of a hybrid between Sphinx and the second back bend, Cobra. I like to interlace my hands when I do this and push away the bolster or the blocks. I get a lot more lengthening through my chest here without having to push up as high as for the cobra back bend. So you choose what you take. You can take Sphinx, your hybrid cobra or Sphinx with the prop or press into your hands and lift all the way up to your version of high cobra. Whichever one you choose, if you have your shoulders up into your ears, Push them back and down. Softly look up. If you still want a deeper stretch, walk your hands a little further back towards your hip points. Soften through your glutes. Take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. And lower all the way down. Stack your hands on top and release you. Your low back feels a little bit sore. We'll stretch it out in a little bit, but bend your knees, draw them far apart, and draw some circles with your feet. This will help release into your low back a little bit. All right, let's take our third and last back bend of this video. So either pressing up to your Sphinx, using your prop for your hybrid Sphinx and Cobra, or all the way up to your high cobra. Take a deep breath in and push up. Squeeze your shoulders down and back. Imagine pulling your chest forward and your hips back and look up. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Go a little deeper, whatever that might mean for you here. Deep breath in. Deep breath out and come all the way down. Stack your hands, release chin, mouth, or forehead, and find stillness or separate your knees, kick up your heels, and draw some circles with your feet. And let's slowly start to press our way up into our tabletop position. So tabletop just means we're on hands and knees, with the idea that our back is sort of forming this tabletop position. Now from here, let's come into our child's pose. This is another one where having a pillow can be really helpful, but it's not necessary. So to come into your child's pose, you'll separate your knees about mass distance apart, press your big toes together, then press your bum back towards your heels and reach your arms forward until your forehead might be able to reach the mat or the ground. Sometimes it's helpful to lift the hips higher to access forehead to ground or to draw the knees a little bit further apart. This is an active child pose, which gets pretty deep into both the hip flexors and the shoulders. If it feels like too much, walk your knees a little closer in together. Now, if this feels like it's not working out, you can take a couple of pillows or a yoga bolster and place them either between your thighs, underneath your pelvis, or you can place a yoga block or a yoga bolster underneath your forehead to help bring your head to the ground. Find a space here that feels secure for you where you can feel some good stretching either in your hips, shoulders, or both. And take a few deep breaths here. Notice where you feel sensation. Maybe you feel an opening in your hips or an opening in your shoulders. Maybe you feel some lengthening along your spine or your low back. Notice 
notice any places feeling discomfort and imagine sending your breath into those places. Using inhales to pick up that tension and exhales to relax into them and send tension out of the body. Take three more deep breaths here, not indulging on anything that you're feeling, just noticing. Slowly start to press back up into your tabletop position, coming back onto hands and knees. And if you'd like, you can wiggle your tail a little bit or shimmy your shoulders. Now it can be natural at this point to have a little discomfort going on in your knees. This is a little bit of a knee heavy day. Know that you can always roll up your yoga mat, place a blanket underneath your knees, or even your bolster or a pillow to add a little bit of cushion. All right, let's come into our next position, which is our forelimb staff or high plank pose. Now most of you have probably done a plank position before, so we'll put a little bit of a yoga twist into it today. Our first option is knee plank. So from your tabletop position, walk your hands forward until your hips make a perfect diagonal line towards the ground. So a lot of people for knee plank, I see them still in this sort of tabletop position with hips over knees. We want to press the hips as far forward as we can while still keeping the arms fully extended. This will have a lot more core engagement. From here, Press really hard into all 10 fingerprints, avoid dumping into the wrists, and puff up your shoulder blades. Look up to the top of your mat, and if you're doing it correctly, even if you've got a pretty strong core, you should feel some sensation here. Your second option is, of course, your knees up, forelimb staff, full high plank. Lift your kneecaps up, sink your booty down, rock forward on your toes, and puff up your shoulder blades. Look up to the top of your mat. Now, a lot of people really struggle with the push-up part, so let's focus on that today by taking several scapular push-ups. Feel free to watch me to see what this looks like. So whether I'm in knee plank or high plank, I see a lot of new yogis doing this guy where we've got really saggy shoulders. To help correct this and stabilize through the upper back and shoulders, we push the ground away. Like we're really trying to round through the shoulder blades, then intentionally sink back. As you can see by my demo, I inhale when I sink down and I exhale when I push up. For this particular exercise, I want to exhale when I feel like I'm doing the most muscle engagement to help my body relax through the strength building. Let's take five of these. Find either your knee plank or your high plank and we'll find five scapular push-ups. Inhale, sink down. Exhale, push up. Down. Up for three, up two, up one, up. Place your knees down if they're not there already and press back into your child's pose. Knees apart, big toes together. Press your bum back and reach your hands forward. Feel free to grab any props you need. Remember not to worry about what the pose looks like or comparing yourself to any other arbitrary standard. Just enjoy a chance to slow your heart rate down and breathe here. Let's take three more deep breaths and notice as your heart rate starts to slow down. Slowly press back up to your tabletop position. We've got one more shape to learn today. That is the classic downward facing dog. Most people, when they think of yoga, they think of this pose. For today, if you do have two yoga blocks or a stack of pillows or a yoga bolster, this can be really helpful in helping to open up your shoulders. If not, that's okay, do the best you can. So from our tabletop position, if you have a prop, place your hands on top of your prop. This brings the ground up to you. 
Now to get fully into our downward dog, start by lifting up your kneecaps into your full forelimb staff, high plank position, then push into your hands, bend your knees as you lift your hips skyward. Start with a really generous bend in the knees. Now pause here and notice what you feel. You might feel a lot of push in your shoulders, a lot of squeeze in your core, maybe some tightness in the hamstrings. Remember, you can always come down to your tabletop or take your child's pose. This is a really active position, so don't be shy about taking breaks as you learn it. When you're ready, come back up and let's start by taking the dog for a walk. So we press one heel towards the ground, bend the other knee in towards your chest, then switch. You might have heard my little knee pops there. That's pretty common in this pose. But what we're really doing is stretching out the hamstrings and the calves. Remember your breath. Don't hold your breath here and you can always come down to your table pose. Let's take one more pedal on each side. Come back down into your tabletop position. Now, if you're not feeling a lot in your shoulders, feel free to take your prop away and try it without it. I'll demo working on this without a prop, but know that you can still use them if you'd like to. Place your hands back down. To protect your wrist, press into all 10 fingerprints and into the meat between your forefinger and thumb. Lift your kneecaps up into your high plank position. Bend your knees as you lift your hips up high. Now pause here for the deepest stretch in downward jog. Think about pressing your chest toward your thighs and your tailbone up to the sky. Doesn't matter how bent your knees are, we really wanna go for this nice long shape in the upper body for a deep shoulder stretch. If that feels pretty good, relax your neck. Take a big breath in and start to exhale as you ground your heels towards the floor. It is completely okay if your legs don't straighten much and your heels absolutely do not have to touch the ground. Let's take three deep breaths here, knowing that if your body is inviting or mandating a break, you can always find that. Relax your neck, maybe nodding your head yes, shaking your head no, Push a little harder into your hands. Lift your tailbone high. Take one more deep breath. Slowly release your knees down and let's press back into our child's pose. Knees apart, big toes together. Press your bum back towards your heels and you can reach your hands forward or you can shift into embryo pose here by sweeping your hands back behind you. This can be really nice, especially if your hands are sore from all of our planking and down dogging. And feel free to put a cheek down instead of your forehead. Take one deep breath. And if your cheek is down, switch the side cheek that you're on. One more deep breath. Place your hands back underneath you if you lifted them and slowly press back up to a seated position. All right, let's have a little cool down time before our Shavasana. So we did some really wrist and knee heavy poses today. Let's give a little love to our hands and wrists before we come back to our meditation. So take your hands out in front of you and flex your fingers towards your face. Act like you're snatching something for 10, nine, eight, seven, Five, four, three, two, one. Take one deep breath. Now act like you're flicking water off your fingers for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now interlace your hands together and draw some figure eights with your knuckles, stretching into all different sides of the wrists. Notice your breathing. And switch the direction of your figure eight drawing. It might be a little bit of a brain teaser, that's okay. And release the interlace, and if you'd like, you can circle your wrists or shake them out a little bit. Maybe shimmy out your shoulders a little bit. And let's find our Shavasana. So classically, for a full mat practice, our Shavasana is done laying down. 
Shavasana or corpse pose is also known as pentacle pose because traditional Shavasana is legs long, max distance apart, and hands either out to the sides with palms up or all the way up and overhead. However, I'm a firm believer in Shavasana just being whatever is comfortable for you laying down. For me, that usually means sliding a pillow underneath my kneecaps and placing one hand to heart, one hand to belly. You can feel free to experiment with whatever's comfortable for you. Once you're where you want to be, notice the curve of your low back. If you find it's pinching, you might also like to place a pillow under your knees or just softly reset your pelvic tilt by lifting your hips and placing them back down. Shimmy your shoulder blades comfortably underneath you. And slowly shake your head no to relax through the back of your neck. Start to blink your eyes closed or soften your gaze. And take a big inhale through your nose. And out through your mouth. Start to settle into stillness here. Remembering that our Shavasana or corpse pose is designed to be full stillness of body and of mind. See how much you can slow down your thoughts. And then start to see how little weight you can give to each thought. Allowing your mind to clear and quiet as you rest. We'll take one minute for today's Shavasana. Rest deeply and I'll let you know when it's time to wake up. Start to bring some soft movement back into your body. Maybe you wiggle your fingers and toes or circle your wrists and ankles. Maybe shake your head side to side or take a big good morning stretch with arms high and legs long. In your time, slowly curl your knees up into your chest, squeezing yourself into a little ball. And pause here as you give yourself a hug to send yourself a little gratitude for trying something new and showing up for yourself today. Slowly roll off to one side and use your arms to press your way up to a seated position. Meet me there with your hands to your heart center. And we end our yoga practice with our same phrase of namaste, meaning the light and goodness in me sees and bows to the light and the goodness in you. Namaste. If you haven't already, please check out my St. Jude fundraiser page on Facebook or follow me on any other socials and I will see all of you tomorrow. Take care and be well.